everybody. Oh, happy Thursday. Welcome. I hope you're enjoying your day. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Make yourself as comfortable as you possibly can because we're going to kind of go a little deep in our lesson today. We're going to be exploring the essence of if you'd like to be a great singer, this is the one thing you've got to stop saying to yourself. So we're going to dive into that in depth here in just a minute. I just want to make a couple of announcements. Hi, Lucinda. Just want to make a couple of announcements. One, if you are enjoying these videos, please be sure to give them a thumbs up or click that subscribe button below. I'm really happy that you're here and I'm really so very grateful for this community that we've been building in our live and our live sessions. I'm so I couldn't be more thrilled that you are all here and that I'm seeing a lot of the same names each week. I'm so grateful to be a part of your vocal journey. I just also want to say that this Monday, our upcoming live streams are going to be available exclusively for members. So if you'd like to become a member, just click that join button. It's directly below the screen. It's $4.99 a month. And your membership really helps to support the channel so that we, we can keep doing these live stream videos. So here we go. If you want to become a great anything, but specific to singing, if you want to be a great singer, what do you guys think? What do you think is the one thing you've got to stop saying to yourself? Hi, Fuzzy. So what do you think is the one thing you've got to stop saying to yourself? Mm? And it doesn't matter if you are completely new, a completely new singer, or you've actually been singing your entire life. I have seen this on both ends of the spectrum and is absolutely, I would say it's kind of demonic. It's totally diabolical and it completely undermines everything you do, no matter how good you are. Asira, you got it. You said, I suck. <laughs> I'll never be good enough. Thank you, Shalon. Yes, I'll never be good enough. That's it. Bam. That is the million dollar statement. That, no, 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 I know. I, I'm just going to be completely honest and absolutely transparent with you guys. I had a little bit of a fit probably like three hours ago. <laughs> We were sitting down to breakfast and I pretty much did the same thing. Ah, I'm not good enough. And my, my husband, Mike, because he is glorious and he's wonderful and he's so supportive. He's like, then that's exactly what you should talk about today. That's exactly it. So pretty much everything that we go over in our live streams videos is like my life. <laughs> I'm so familiar with it. So I want to get into kind of where that comes from, why we're so susceptible to it and sensitive to it. And what can we do to gently, gently, gently guide our minds and our hearts out of that diabolical, stop you in your tracks, completely undermine everything that you could possibly do for your voice. So let's talk about where it comes from. I do think that we kind of get a little confused because we, we see, we see so many people who are absolutely brilliant, being on the stage, being absolutely perfect in everything that they're doing. And we use that as our own benchmark for not only like um, excellence, we use that as our benchmark for acceptable. Like unless we are exactly the same, mm, we dare not step onto a stage or into a recording studio or in front of a voice teacher, or step out in any possible frame. We may think, unless we sound exactly like our favorite singers, we are not sophisticated enough, we are not acceptable, we're just sort of kind of... <clears throat> so that thought right there, I'll never be good enough, is a thought that only has one purpose, and that's to stop you. And I bet you, it's done a pretty, pretty darned good job at stopping you at some point. If you look underneath that, if you just kind of peek underneath that, any belief that stops you is fear based. And that's really coming from a place of something in our mind that's trying to keep us safe. Well, 
The only way that we're ever going to be safe is if we do nothing, absolutely nothing. If we don't try anything, if we don't take a risk on anything. And some people fall for that and they say, well, I tried and it just didn't work out or I just gave up probably because of that I'm not good enough thought. And later on in their life, 99% of the time, what happens to those folks is they become bitter, bitter and resentful because they're in pain. They're absolutely in pain. So we don't want that to happen to us, do we? No, no. I really hope you're saying, no, no, no. I will do anything to keep that from happening. So we want to retool, rework this so that our voices, we're looking specifically at the relationship with our voice today, can be free. So let's take a, let me calm down for just a second. I'm too excited right now. (laughs) So freedom, if we think about what freedom is, of course we want it. We want confidence. We want authenticity. We want freedom. We want to know that we have talent. We have something that only we can really offer the world. Well, if you're standing kind of at the at the doorway of those words, you have to be a little bit more specific. Like, what does freedom mean? What is that? What does that mean? And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we are going to realize that the word freedom asks us to be willing just willing to move just any block any fear based psychological emotional the feeling of i'm not good enough that's a block and when that block is kind of embodied it's in our body and it's manifesting as a a jerk of fear or a reaction that absolutely masks emotion we cannot be authentic we cannot be honest because we've attached our voice to be this specific criteria like a minute ago we said it could be another artist or it could be maybe the way a teacher has told you to be like you have to be this way so we get this tunnel vision of my voice has to be like this and that's completely conditional the voice is a trainable instrument it's habitual so if you put it under the certain conditions over and over again it will do what you're asking it to do And that makes me so sad because I've seen people who have like technically beautiful voices, but there's just nothing there. There's nothing there. So as we're approaching our practice, we want to have standards for ourselves. Like we want to say, okay, I want to sound, I want to say good, but then that's like a dangerous word. Be specific. Like I'd like today, I'd like to work on pitch and I'm just going to work on pitch. And as you're focusing on pitch and maybe you've got a pitch listening app with you, you're not focusing on how you sound. You're just going, am I meeting those pitches? Am I meeting that one criteria for satisfaction? Good. That will get your voice to focus so that ultimately it can relax. I hope that makes sense to you because we have to embody two somewhat paradoxical modes of being. One is technique, and that's where we go, hmm, is pitch good? Is tone quality good? Are all my criterias acceptable to me? And then we've got to embody over here performance. Now, my definition of performance is how relaxed am I? How totally authentic am I being? How embodied is the sound? I've recorded myself um, singing a few times and I get cringy with my own voice because I can actually tell that I'm thinking about what I'm doing and that makes me cringe because I'm actually thinking and I can see that I'm thinking and I just want, if I were to offer myself advice, it would be, oh, just relax. You've got this. Like just enjoy the work that you've done instead of continuing to think about that. So we've got to embody these two contrary modes of being, technique and performance. One says focus, and the other one says let go. Now since the bulk of the channel, the work that we do on this channel is technically focused, 
I'd like to talk about what it means to be over here in this performance stance. What does, what does that ask? What does that, what does that want from us? Well, it means that you've got to be willing to let the voice sing you. I'll say that slow again for emphasis because that really, that matters a lot to me. We've just got to be willing to let the voice sing you. We don't know. We don't know what our authenticity is. We don't know. We can't put it into words. It's not something that can be mentalized. We get these glimpses of authenticity and it manifests deep in our body as like, oh, that felt kind of amazing. That's, that's how we know. It just feels really good to us. So we've got to develop a relationship with that part of ourselves. And I know what I'm asking. There's high risk to that because there is a truth in this. If you let your voice sing you, at some point, your voice is going to do something that disappoints you. It's going to wobble. It's going to break. It's going to miss a pitch. It's going to shout. It's going to do something that disappoints you. And that disappointment, that shock, or that reaction that you have to your voice may pop you up into your head and go, <gasps> and then mm, immediately start being critical of yourself. So what it really means to be authentic is completely and unapologetically present. I'm just going to let this happen. I'm just going to let this happen. I know you can do this and I'm going to get a little tough with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you guys the way that I talk to myself for just a second. You can do this, like you can do this, but you've got to be brave in a way that's like, oh, look, look, because <laughs> we don't want to see, we don't want to see when we relax and we forget ourselves and we just fully let go. We, we lose that sense of self-awareness and we just are. We're fully embodied. And sometimes that comes out messy or sometimes that comes out really wild, but that's real. That's who you are. And maybe there, that little wobble or that something that caused you to kind of come out of it and react, maybe all that is is a tiny little manifestation of you moving letting movement happen where you didn't let it happen before i mean i'm getting emotional at this um, if there's one thing as a voice teacher that i really celebrate it's when singers voices actually sound like <laughs> i'm like oh yeah i get so excited about it because i can see right there in that moment that they relaxed and something real happened something very Mm, real, authentic freedom just manifested itself. And because your voice is just not accustomed to that kind of movement, that's how it sounded. But I really get excited about it because just having that momentary willingness to let that happen, that can change you deeply, deeply change you. So what is... What is freedom? I think in a nutshell, it is just, I think freedom is the same as talent, really. I think freedom is just to be free of all blocks. And there's only one way to be free of all blocks. And that means there's a sense of confronting them. Not like I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight them. I do have that in my personality. I really love a good fight. <laughs> I love a good, challenge. I really do. But it's being able to just kind of sit with it and accept it. There's nothing wrong with you. You didn't mess up. Your voice is not funky or defunct or de like damaged or boring. Oh, when people say I'm afraid to be boring, I get that. I really get that. And I think when a voice is overly technical, it's boring. 
it's so boring. It's beautiful in terms of the sound, but there's nothing there. There's no, there's nothing there. So when you can be still, just be still enough and really let the voice sing you. Oh my goodness. Once you get over that awkward phase of, oh, it's, it's really hard. It's really just hard to hear or it's hard to feel. Sometimes singers will even cry because there's so much anxiety and there's so much fear meant like kind of in their bodies that when they finally just relax, there is a feeling of being seen like for the first time. And that can really manifest as like um, a deeply emotional experience, deeply emotional experience. That's what talent is, is to be free of all blocks. Have you ever, have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that in popular culture? Have you seen an artist just blow your mind with how present they were and how (sighs) present they were? Not to say it twice, but. They didn't have anything that they needed to prove. It's like they trusted their technique to the place that it was completely invisible. They didn't need to show off. They didn't need to show you, look at all these runs I can do. Look at this high note that I can sing for the sake of doing all those things. I get very bored with that. But if they can hold their heart open just by standing there, just by being there, we can feel and sense that vulnerability And we know we can sense it because we immediately feel connected. That's what's so beautiful about it. When you let all that stuff, all that, well, I've got to, and, you know, teacher says to do it this way, or, you know, I want to sound like another artist, or I want to be seen as being talented. We all want that. We all want to be seen. But to be really seen, I think it's the riskiest thing we'll ever do. It's the most courageous thing we'll ever do, which is why you can do it at home and you can start to build that in your practice. So what is authenticity as a vocal practice? I would say it's kind of like meditation where you're not thinking about a certain tone quality. Let's just say you're offering up a sound. And then you're just going to move it. And as you move the sound, the interval could be so small, just a little siren work. You're consciously concentrated on, could I be more relaxed? Could I be more relaxed? And you're just managing it from moment to moment to moment. And any time a wobble or a break or a shriek happens, You're just immediately going to go, it's all right. It's all right. Try it again. Can I be more relaxed? It's, It's a mode of being that we have to consistently build a relationship to. I do think that voice almost might be its own being. I really do think it's like our spirit and it sings us. And our job is actually just to get out of the way just to get out of the way. Simple as that. As you continue to foster and nurture this behavior, you might be doing things just like impulsed to do things, like almost like an instinct. There are certain choices that you feel like, oh, like your essence and your energy, your spirit and your voice like wants to run. It wants to do things that might actually be contrary to what you used as your benchmark for acceptable. I have to do this, then I'll be acceptable. But if you relax and you work with that relaxation, you can think of this as I'm going to actually untrain my voice. Then you can just restore your voice to its instinct. And that's where your gifts are. That's ah. That's where your gifts are. I've seen it every single time when people finally stop trying to be what other people think is acceptable. They start to really uncover their actual gifts that they had no idea was there before. 
and you may have to do this a lot. Like I said earlier, I told on myself. I had my own little temper tantrum about not being good enough about something, and I just had to get over myself in a, in a loving way. <laughs> but this is how it's done. Kind of sit with it. Play. Play is the fastest way to bring your voice back to instinct. And your destiny, your talent, is an instinct. That's why you're here. That's why we're together right now, is because you feel something. You just feel something. It feels like energy or potential or fire or life. Something is asking to be expressed within you. And there's a discord because head, not head, is kind of fighting with heart a little bit. Head is trying to control everything where heart just wants the experience. That's it. It just wants the experience. So there's a little bit of both, managing both sides of the equation. And I would actually really say that this in its heart is what practice really is. If you were to take 10 minutes, a total of 20 minutes a day, Take 10 minutes and focus on something very small, technically. That way you can achieve it. So if you just want to work on a specific pitch, like there's one pitch that's really difficult for me, it's the, the A4, really weird for me in my voice, that once I got over my brain injury, I, I, could, I just sat and sang it for like 10 minutes straight because it was just so slippery, so slippery. I couldn't have pressure in my head. It was really hard. So I would just sit, and I had no problem doing that at all. I actually really enjoy that kind of tedious work. <laughs> but I liked it because it let me know that I was succeeding. And if I could do that enough, I kind of owned the pitch. I didn't have to think about it anymore. So my voice stopped behaving in weird ways around that pitch. So after 10 minutes, hmm, I shifted my focus over to now I'm just going to express. I'm just going to feel what it feels like to let this go, let this pitch go. And that's how you would work on your, on your music. But you've got to be willing, and there's where all the fear is, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, a lot of fear is in letting go. There's comfort in technique. So much comfort in it. Your voice will be perfect if you just do these five things every day for the next month. You know, there's, there's comfort in that. There's structure in that. And there's, it's not wrong, but technique will never, ever, ever substitute for your spirit, your authenticity. So, what do you guys think? <laughs> Am I'll never be good enough or I'm not good enough does not have any room in your, in your mind, in your consciousness. Now, we all have it. And I wish I could tell you it was just a button we could push and then forever be done with it. No. This right here, this work is probably at the heart, the root of the work. The work. But I can promise you, I can promise you, that if you allow yourself to show up and be present to yourself without any desire to change, to change your sound as you're just letting it go and you're just seeking to embody it. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to perfect it. You're not trying to do all of those things. You just allow it to be. It is insane how quickly you start to change. And when you Let's pretend like when you go into like a recording studio and maybe you've written, maybe you've written a song and you're, it's the day of your, you're going to cut your vocals and all the musicians that played on the track are there and they're all sitting there waiting for you to embody the voice or the song. Yeah, there's some serious fear, especially since those musicians are people you look up to or those musicians play on lots of lots of big tours that anyone would recognize. Well, you want to be like, you know, <laughs> I want to impress you with my voice. Of course, of course, that would be there in the mind. But if you work 
with showing up in your practice before you show up for that day, ah, the gift that you give them, regardless of where it is, the gift that you give them is you actually share the experience with them. It's not about you, it's about the experience. It's about the excitement of having the experience together, being together. And that's it. That is the only gift we can give. It's not, I need to be better than everybody else, or I need to sing higher or louder than everybody else. Some people try that. I think we all know artists that really try to do that. But there, we can only hear that so much until we're just like, okay, I get it. You can sing. What else can you do? Shit. Tell me a story. Take me somewhere. Share your heart with me. Trust me enough to share your heart with me. And I do happen to think that that's the only gift that artists can actually give is I'm just going to let my ego down. I'm going to let my guard down. And maybe I can practice this enough where this feels kind of somewhat comfortable that I'm now more invested in us having an experience together rather than <laughs> tell me how great I am. I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, but I love it. I love it when an artist can just say, so here we are together. Let's go on a trip. Let's go on a journey. Let's play. Let's have a real life experience together as if it were like the first time that we're having it together. So am I good enough? Slowly, you will stop saying that. Slowly, you will stop saying that. But it will shock you. And I bet you if you're here and you're listening to this video, you already know that when you manifest the courage to go, okay, I'm showing up for myself. I'm ready to be with myself. And then the voice disappoints you. Oh, it's like you want to run out of the room. Like you actually want to run out of the room. Let me go do the laundry. Let me go do the dishes. Let me go do something else that distracts me from just how completely embarrassed I am at myself. Nobody else heard. Nobody else saw. But I feel betrayed. It's okay. It's all right. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. So walk in fully giving yourself permission to let that happen. Give yourself that permission. When it happens, see if you can sense, ah, I've allowed my voice to be restored back to movement. And that's what happened. And then just do it again and again and again. That relationship will carve out new pathways that will allow you to embody your voice instead of just showing your voice, okay? It's been absolutely wonderful, wonderful exploring this topic with you guys. I'm going to um, take some questions because I see there's some questions. So I'm so, again, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Just a reminder for everyone who's joining in, I hope that you're enjoying these lives. They're made for you with love. The lives going forward will be specifically for members only. So if you want to join, become a member, just hit that join button right underneath that screen. It's $4.99 a month and your membership helps to support the channel so that we can continue doing these lives together. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some, take some questions here. Okay. Oh, Shredder, I am good enough even when I'm not perfect because it feels good. Yeah, that's your, uh, yes. That's it. If it feels good, and if you know, if you felt that in your voice, you know exactly what I mean. If it feels like you just want to jump out of your skin at the sheer elation of being alive, that's when the spirit of your voice is singing you. That's how you know. It just feels like, ah, excuse me, I'm going to be profane. It feels almost like orgasmic. It just feels like lightning is going through your body. It just feels incredible. And it's just, yes, joyful noise, as Dolly Parton calls it. Okay, strange cat. Hello, may I please find out if you have a fear of singing? Would just doing it, regardless of the outcome, help you to be braver? That, yes, exposure therapy. 
absolutely small, small, tiny, little, tiny, tiny, little. Um, if you have a fear, the type of fear that makes you not want to sing in front of anyone, then ask a friend or ask a love, like, like a husband or a wife or a daughter or a son or a cousin, someone that you trust is going to help you be on the side of yourself that you're wanting to become. That's why I love my husband so much. Because when I can't see how, like all I can see about myself, it's like he sees a me that I'm trying to become. And it's like, he just sees it. So it, it, it feels so much easier to kind of step into that a little bit. So, cause he, he's helping to hold that space for me. But yes, small, little, can I just sing a line from a song for you? Or, you know, if there's an audition for a, a choir or a musical, and it's a small 16 bar something, that's about 30 seconds on average. That's, that's a big deal, but that's a little, that's a little something that can really give you that, that hero moment. Yeah, find as many hero moments as you can find, but make sure that it's not like I'm just going to throw myself out onto social media at, I'm going to throw myself into the wolves of a, thousands of strangers who can just say whatever they want to say. That's not always helpful. Eventually, Eventually, you'll be so comfortable in your skin that you can do that because it doesn't, it's not that it would matter if they, if they were throwing their stones like they will, like they do. It's like the experience for you was so satisfying and fulfilling and meaningful that it won't even matter. I do promise that if you, if you, you can keep going and you will get there. You absolutely will get there. Okay. Make sure to leave question marks at the ends of sentences, guys. That way I can see them as questions. Let's see. Okay. It's not a question. Just about singing. There's a real you behind of your singing and it's your duty to try to find it. Yeah. Yeah. I just said that really fast. <laughs> yeah. There's like a you, there's like a being, a spirit that is behind all the doing that it's just trying to be known. We all want to be seen. We all want to be known, but I think we all want to be known from ourselves the most. And that's, we are the toughest crowd, absolute toughest crowd. But if we can get out of the way and feel just absolutely how amazing it is just to bring breath and life to voice and how amazing that can feel, oh, we will change really fast. Let me see. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Noise. Hey, friend. Who are some artists that you really feel the soul from? Oh, really good question. Feel the soul from. I need to chew on that. I need to chew on that because it's not something that pops up at the front of my, my mind. I need to chew on that. Sorry. I don't have a lot of, a lot of examples of that. And I think it's hard for artists, even top tier artists, because they, they have to, they have to sing the same songs like a thousand times. And for many, many years, and it's very difficult, I think, to keep the, the soul intact in that. And some singers are very good at putting on a show. And I don't fault them for that. But let me see. I keep wanting to say Adele. I keep wanting to say Adele. Um, we went to see the Trans-Siberian Orchestra just a couple weeks ago. And it was was really funny. I had to actually watch the um, concert like this because I am still prone to seizures because I have a, a, a had a brain injury. So lights, flashing lights are really difficult for me. And I forgot because of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Orchestra. <laughs> orchestra. <laughs> and the lights immediately started flashing and I was like, oh, 
But there was a couple moments where there was a female singer that was on the stage, and she she was so in it that her voice actually um, shook several times from emotion. But I have to tell you, when her voice was shaking through emotion, I, I was right there. I was right in the palm of her hand. I was like, oh, my God. It was so amazing and wonderful, and I appreciated her just being so available and I think everyone felt felt the same way. How do we learn, Nimora? How do we learn to own our space? <sighs> I'll do a video about that. I absolutely will. It's it's one of those things that's very simple, but it's actually really difficult. It's really not easy. Part of the reason it's not easy is because we're so easily distracted. So as we're standing there and trying to own our own space then we're thinking about this and then we're thinking about this and we might have patterned a behavior so intensely about thinking about every phrase we sing or what's our breath like or do i need to lift my soft palate a little bit more there's just so much mentalization that's going on that that takes you right up into your head space i would say my favorite thing to do to help me own my own space is actually to put my hands on my chest and I've patterned this so much that as soon as I put my hands there, it's like, oh, I feel this like falling deep down into myself, going from up here to down here. And it just feels like presence. That's difficult because we're all so busy. We're all so busy and we're so guarded. We may have a thought of, well, I've got to think about what I'm doing because that's where my listening is. And if I'm listening to everything that I'm doing, then I can control it. But if we're not listening and we're feeling, because that's two separate things, and you'll notice that when you're just in presence, you're actually not listening anymore. You're just feeling. I know that sounds weird right now, if it's unfamiliar for you. But you can hear that there's, you can sense, you can feel the sound rather than hear the sound. I actually do think that's how audiences listen. I think we intuit the sound. I don't think we're as, as much in our ears as we think we are. I think we're just really in our, in our hearts. Or we're trying to be in our hearts. And music is one of those things that pulls us right down. If it's good, it can pull us right down into, into that space. Excuse me, I'm just going to slide through. Oh, Lady Gaga, Shredder. I almost said that. I almost said that. She's very intense. Very, very intense. Brandy Carlisle. Oh, yes. Shredder, I'm all about what you're, what you're saying today. Yes, Brandy Carlisle. I love her. Actually, one of my favorite songs from her is called Raise Hell. And that's my, that's my jam. Okay, Imperfect Progress. I love that. I feel electrified and alive in my truest expression of voice, but stop myself due to the over, overwhelm, and it stops my growth and development as a singer. Yes. Yes. It's simple. But it's not easy. It's not easy. It's actually really difficult. Stay, stay small. Give yourself small little victories, but be very aware when you have the victory. There's a momentum, and I'm really glad that I read this. Because there's a momentum about feeling. Like once it gets going, then it gets going more, and then it gets going more, and then we just want to jump out of our skin. It's like we can't, we cannot be contained. It's absolutely amazing. But I would say, oh, I've been dancing around this word the whole time, and that word is trust. Really hard for us, just as people, because we're so wounded, we're so hurt, we're so afraid of just everything. I mean, hey, that's, that's life, isn't it? But sometimes people have this saying of, um, you gotta earn the trust. You gotta earn my trust. I don't like that. I don't like that. That, that really perpetuates this, this, I've gotta justify my voice, or I've gotta justify my sense of meaning in my voice based off of what someone else thinks. That's so dangerous, so dangerous. So trust. That's how to take it from being overly mentalized into fully embodied where you can actually relax, 
where you can enjoy your voice as a singer. And that's just, that's the gift that you give yourself. And that's the only real gift that you can give someone else. There was a really um, awesome question in here. It scares people too because you touch a part of them. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're so scared to be honest. And I, I, I hate that. I hate that. I, I want everyone to just be kinder in a sense that we're all in process. We're all trying to bloom. That's what it reminds me of. It's like when a flower, even if it's a bud that's like pretty tight, you don't say, you don't say that it's not blooming. You say it's blooming. Even when it's like this or it's like way open, it's still blooming. There's a process about it. So staying with yourself, giving yourself permission to just let something new happen or just let the voice sing you shift your attention away from how it sounds to how it feels. But you do have to manage both of those modes of being because I'm not saying that I don't want you to have excellent standards. I want you guys to be amazing, but I want you to be proud of it in a meaningful way. Not just proud of it because you've met everyone else's expectations. No, 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 no. I want you to feel like this is the most meaningful thing that I can do with my life. This is the most meaningful thing that I can share with other people that's just the gift that keeps on giving it just it's wonderful so give yourself permission if your voice does something weird celebrate that celebrate that let it do it again let it do it again and let it do it again you're creating a new pathway for a new behavior to go and your voice the habits that make your voice what it is will shift away from something that's concealing, you know, like when we, when we have too many conditions on the voice, the voice behaves in ways that are concealing. It's like tight, even if it's perfect to something that's revealing. It's just open, open, open. Good. I love you guys. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so happy about today's conversation. Ah, okay. I'll answer one more question because this is a really Thank you so much, Catholic Calling, for your super chat. I just want to say this really quickly because it came across really fast. Chelsea, how does one learn to trust their voice after strain or vocal injury? I know that. I had a little vocal injury myself um, because of acid reflux. And it made everything inside, I couldn't touch it. It was very puffy and um, it's really hard to regain my trust. You go slow slow touch i call it the gentle touch just a tiny little gentle touch in whatever way you can touch and slide it's like just be very quiet about it and touch it and move just tiny little movements you just want that you want to revo restore your voice back to movement be very gentle with that touch be very aware of the touch when you realign your voice to sensation, oh, it's like everything is amazing. Everything is just some, something new to feel, something new to explore. It's absolutely wonderful. So when you can get that gentle touch and there's a nice closed sound, barely, then just move it just a little bit and stay with that. Become a master of movement. Oftentimes, vocal injury manifests because there's a block, the vocal block, which means you're not allowing movement. You're not, you're, it's restricted from movement. The voice, again, is behaving in ways that are very tight. So if you touch gently and then just gently move, you restore your voice back to the way that it was supposed to be used. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being with me today. This was so meaningful for me. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you so much for sharing your vocal journey. Thank you so much for including me in that journey. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next time. Bye guys.